in all situations, examine yourself. If a ferocious animal appear right now, what is your spirit telling you? Are your thoughts centered on Christ? Are your desires like Christ? The angel of the Lord always has peace and joy because they know that though they need to abide by the physical rules of this earth because God sent these angels of God to live here on the earth for a while, but as a child of God, you are able to tap into God's realm, which is heaven even though you're still on earth, because the earth is still God's footstool. To be an angel of God, it is easy. Jesus' burden is light. It is written in the Bible. Therefore, it is easy to be an angel of the Lord. Only devote yourself to prayer and fasting. As a child of God, you will know what is good and bad to do every second of your life on earth. You'll be able to distinguish the schemes of the flesh and the devil. If we are not ignorant, we will be able to know that the plans we are planning now, it is of the flesh. And the problem with many of the people around us is that when they plan in the flesh, and a blessing come after they plan. They now start to say that it is God that blessed them. No. In this world, there are two kingdoms. The kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of Caesar. After Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, the kingdom of Jesus, he reigns forever. Even now, he's still a king of both heaven and earth. But, af but even after his resurrection, the earthly kings still reign. After Caesar died, it is another king called Nero, so on and so forth. Let give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to Jesus what is Jesus. So when we sow in the flesh and we reap a benefit in the flesh, will we be having the gift of discernment to know that this is not of Jesus, even if it succeeds or not? God has allowed many to think that they are in the realm of discernment, whereas they are not. Because they think that they do not need to humble themselves. Even the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, also need to pray and to fast. <clears throat> so who are we to go to the realm to communicate with God? If we do not pray, come close to God, humble ourselves. Are we greater than Jesus? No, we are not. If Jesus needs to pray and fast, so also we have to. But do not fast and pray like the Pharisees. The Pharisees fast twice a week. However, they still cannot communicate with God. Therefore, fasting is spiritual. Just like how we are eating Jesus' body and drinking his blood, it is spiritual. It is just like when we are eating Jesus' body and drinking his blood. It is spiritual. So fasting is also spiritual. This is why the Pharisees fast twice a week. They still can't enter heaven. But another Christian who is a real Christian, he fasts twice a week, he can go heaven. Because spiritual matters in the heart. The crowd have to follow Jesus for three days. Then they can see the miraculous multiplying of bread and fish. Just like Apostle Paul. He have to talk all the way until the next morning throughout the night. Then the time for miracle happened to raise the dead. But notice, even though you did not do it, that does not mean that you cannot do it. John the Baptist did not raise the dead, did not taken up to heaven, cannot cast down fire from heaven, but he is still Elijah. If he is the Elijah to come, meaning what Elijah can do, he can also do. But he did not do what Elijah did. But that doesn't mean he cannot do. 
So I have said it before. It means that, I mean, at the resurrection, you will see John the Baptist raising the dead and casting down fire from heaven because he can do it. It's just that in his life on earth, there was no occasion for him to do it, as God wills. There are certain situations where you need to counsel people and not to cast out the Spirit. Yes, everybody that come to you will conduct deliverance on the person. That is wrong. Because God told Moses to speak to the rock instead of striking the rock. And Moses said to himself, I don't care. I want to strike the rock. And Moses struck the rock. And God said, you broke faith with me. You cannot go to the promised land. So similarly, God never tell you to conduct deliverance on the person. But you are like Moses. You strike the rock. Instead, God tell you to speak to the rock. You just need to counsel the person. And the spirit will leave. Say to yourself, it is not all people that come to me for prayer. I need to do deliverance. Rather, it may be just counseling, like how Moses should speak to the rock and the water come out. Now the question is, how do we know? Only be in the Spirit. And how to be in the Spirit? It is to pray and to fast. Abstain yourself from worldly news. And this is the thing. When we are persecuted, we do not leave that place. Whereas Jesus Christ say, when you're persecuted in one place, flee. But now when we are persecuted, we do not flee. Whereas Jesus said, you have to flee. Don't waste time there. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who found a treasure and he sold all he had to buy that treasure. So that is our answer on what to do in life. Should we stay in our current secretary job or other job? That is the answer. Anything that hinder you from obtaining that treasure, that is persecution. Flee. If imposing a fine on the innocent is not good, surely to flock honest officials, it is not right. What is this verse in today's context, if we should not associate anointing with age, surely to arrange cell groups according to age is not right. But now we see churches today, they group cell group according to ages. We see elders in the church today counseling the younger people simply because of their age. They counsel the younger generation according to their experiences, but not by the Spirit of God. Jesus, you're the one.